Hi, Ray here. It's great to see you. In this video, I'm going to compare internal 8-bit video recorded with the Nikon Z6 camera alone with 10-bit analog video recorded to the Atomos Ninja 5. How do they stack up? Well, let's get right to the comparisons and after the demos, stick around and I'll talk a little bit about my workflow.
what can we draw from the preceding clips? Besides the fact that I'm uh, not a pro colorist, while log recording doesn't give you quite the dynamic range of 12-bit ProRes RAW, which requires a paid factory update for use with the Z cameras and their version 2 successors, it does offer greater latitude than 8-bit. And I think that's clear in the comparisons. As I've said, and demonstrated before, most often I record YouTube videos with the Z6 alone using the flat profile, accessed via picture control, simply as a matter of convenience. It's a, <laughs> it's a lot of work to produce one of these videos. And in controlled light, the quality of video right out of these cameras is really quite good, with very little post-processing required. So, here's the workflow for this comparison video. First, at Capture, I simply recorded the scene with the Nikon Z6 camera and Atomos Ninja 5 external recorder using 10-bit N-Log and ProRes 422 HQ codec. Note that recording N-Log restricts the minimum ISO to 800. Then, unplugging the Ninja, I recorded the same scene at the same exposure settings with the Z6 alone, using the camera's flat profile. I used Z-mount lenses, including the 50mm 1.8S and 14-30 f4S, and F-mount 70-200-2.8. With the latter, I also threw in the 2x teleconverter into the mix for fun. For the time-lapse comparison, Animus uh, added time-lapse to the Ninja 5 a few months back, I set up two Z6 cameras with the 10-bit Ninja rig using a 3-stop ND filter to match the exposure on the unit recording in-camera using ISO 100. Note that the Ninja rig used the new Z-mount 70-200 lens while the rig recording internally used its F-mount counterpart. For processing in Final Cut, I added minimal adjustments on the 8-bit clips uh, recorded internally on the Z6, a bit of vibrance, exposure tweaks where needed, using uh, color wheels and curves with minimum sharpening. That's my usual workflow for videos on this channel recorded internally with the Z6. As for the external 10-bit footage, I made similar preliminary adjustments, then added the N-Log LUT according to Nikon's white paper recommendations. At the percentage, I felt best suited the scene, and this is usually somewhere under 50%. I don't always use this LUT, but it does speed up grading, so for this comparison it served its purpose. It should be noted that Nailing exposure is important for both 8-bit and 10-bit recording, and, admittedly, <laughs> I didn't succeed equally in some of these comparisons. Of course, there should be no excuse with the Ninja, which provides all those exposure aids like Luma, RGB, Parade, and False Color. You may notice uh, one of the caveats to using and processing log footage. Noise. Now, noise is not restricted to these cameras or N-Log recording. It's a problem that arises in lifting the shadows. So again, exposure is critical, and the remedy is noise reduction software, which I haven't used in the one or two preceding clips that exhibit the issue. And you'll have no doubt noticed the slight crop on the externally recorded clips. Okay, <laughs> so that's the basic technical details, and if you have any more questions, drop them in the comments below and I'll see if I can answer. I hope you found the video useful. If so, please give it a thumbs up. If you're trying to decide whether 10-bit recording is worth the extra expense and work, did it help? Again, let me know in the comments below. And if you think you'd be interested in more of this kind of content, please subscribe. It really helps the channel. And you can check out more of my videos right here. In the meantime, take care of yourself. Cheers.
We'll see you later.